Savage to you. Welcome all the new people who have tuned in to Emerald City Seventh-day Adventist Church. Happy Sabbath to you. We want to welcome you to our service. We want to welcome in the Holy Spirit in your lives as well as ours. We want to welcome all those who don't know about us and have been invited because everyone is out there inviting people to come in and listen in, tune in to our program. And also, we'd like to worship with you sing with you and have a great sabbath morning so listen in as we start the children's story and again happy sabbath welcome hello everyone it's aunt fernita Today's story is called The Golden Rule. The memory verse is from Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. It says, So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. Today's message is Jesus helps me treat others as I want to be treated. Sarah frowned. The other girls in the lunchroom were pointing at her and laughing. Why were they always so unkind? Then the thought came to her, what would Jesus do? And she looked right at those girls and smiled. Jesus taught that we should treat others as we want to be treated. Imagine that a young boy named Ephraim is listening to Jesus speak. Ephraim got up just before daylight would he be pulling weeds in the garden today? Then his father spoke, Today we are going to listen to Jesus. Ephraim was happy. He had heard that Jesus was the Messiah, and he really wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. Jesus was healing people by the seashore, and the beach was filling up with people. Ephraim and his family hurried to find a place. They watched as some rulers arrived. The rulers frowned at the crowd. Jesus began to climb the hill away from the beach. The people pushed along behind him until they came to a quiet meadow. Jesus sat down near a tree. His disciples pressed through the crowd to be near him. All around him, people sat quietly as he began to speak. The rulers stood in the shade of a nearby tree. Jesus spoke calmly, but so all could hear, Make the kingdom of God first in your life. Ephraim thought, The kingdom of God? What does that mean? Don't judge other people, and you won't be judged yourself. Ephraim thought of the rulers who believed they were better than others. He wondered, Could it be possible that God cares about humble people? Is there any place in Jesus' kingdom for me and my family? Then Jesus taught a lesson about finding fault and judging people. Jesus said, Why do you look at the speck of a sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Let me take out the speck, when all the time there is a plank in your own? You hypocrite! First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Ephraim grinned as he imagined how it would look to have a big plank of wood in his eye. Everyone was laughing, except some of the rulers. Jesus spoke of God's love. Then he announced a rule of his kingdom. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. Now Ephraim understood. In Jesus' kingdom, everyone would treat everyone else fairly. They would not find fault with each other. Instead, they would want Jesus to remove their faults. People would live to serve others. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy for gracelink.net. Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. 
post-produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. Animation and artwork by Giogo Godoy. The audio engineer was Karel Holness. For more information, please visit gracelink.net. Amen. And welcome back. We are your praise team. And we'd like to sing for you this morning. Um, God is great and greatly to be praised. And then we're going to roll into not by might, not by power. Is that all right with you all? You can put your hands together at home. Amen. Amen. Because God is great and greatly to be praised. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love that he shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God we serve. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love that he shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God we serve. God is great. Oh, yes, he is, and greatly, and greatly to be praised. God is God is great. Oh, yes, he is, and greatly. Greatly to be praised. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love that He shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God we serve. God is great. Oh, yes, He is. Greatly to be praised. God is, God is great. Oh, yes, he is, and greatly, and greatly to be praised. God is great. Oh, yes, he is, and greatly, and greatly to be praised. God is, God is great. Oh, yes. God is great, oh, 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 and greatly to be praised. God is, God is great, oh, 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 and greatly to be praised. God is, God is great, oh. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love that he shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God we serve. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Great is the God we serve. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, Lord, by your spirit. Amen. Amen. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Sin your spirit, God, not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God, sin your spirit, God. Yes. Oh, yeah. You are, you are 
the fire. We are the temple. You are the voice. We are your song. You are our God. We are your people. We are the light. We stand in awe. We stand in awe. You. We stand in awe of you. Not by might, not by might, not by power. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God, send your spirit, God, not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God, send your spirit, God, not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God, send your spirit, God. intercessory prayer this morning not by might not by power but by your spirit Lord amen good morning and welcome to Emerald City Community Seventh-day Adventist Church my name is Tony Spivey, and I've been asked to do the opening prayer this morning. Would you please bow your head for prayer at this time? Dear kind and gracious Father, Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning and getting us up and getting us on our way. And even though we can't come together as a church this morning, Lord, we thank you that uh, you've given us the technology and the wherewith to all to get online and to still praise your name. We thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day, Lord. We thank you for watching over us as we come and go, and we just ask you to continue to do that. Lord, as we come to prayer today, there are some of us that need special blessings today, Lord. There's so many of us that are sick, and ailing, and we just ask that you might send your Holy Spirit to touch us today. We pray for those who've been affected by the coronavirus, Lord. We pray that you might be with their families, that you might touch them, and that you might let them know that no matter what's going on, that you're still in charge, and you're still the God, God of heaven, and that you would take care of your people. And we praise you that uh, the many of us that have not been afflicted we thank you, Lord, and we thank you that uh, you've uh, sent a vaccine here so that so many of us won't have to go through those troubles. <clears throat> we pray, Lord, that you might continue to bless and keep us. We thank you so much for those who have come to minister to us today. We pray for our pastor in a very special way, Lord. 
We pray that the words that he speak today, that they might come from you. And we pray that they might land on ears that are listening and waiting to do your will. We ask that you might forgive us of our sins, Lord. Uh, we ask that you might continue to make us ready and willing to do what you would have us to do. We thank you for the church members, Lord, those who uh, cannot come to church and those who are listening at this time, Lord. We pray that you might continue to listen to their prayers, that you might answer their prayers, whatever their heart desires, Lord. We pray for those who are afflicted and sick in the world today, Lord. We pray that you might continue to touch us so that we might want to help them. Now we ask for a special blessing for the pastor today, Lord. We ask that you might touch him as he speaks to us. Help him as he delivers the word to us that it might not fall upon deaf ears. We thank you that uh, we have someone who can speak to us and, and help us to understand what you want us to do. Now, Lord, be with us as we go through another week. Forgive us our many sins, Lord, and help us that we might continually uh, strive to do the best that we can and uh, strive that we might be prepared for that great day when thou art seen coming in the clouds of glory. We pray that you might help each of us that we might save in that blood-washed army. For we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. Hi, I'm Daryl Spivey, and I'm delighted to join Tony Spivey in the morning's prayer and offering. We just heard the prayer, and now I want to have an opportunity uh, to ask you for your offering. I'm not asking for your funds this morning. I'll leave that to your church leaders to do. I'm asking you to share gifts of your time, your talent, your temple. And in addition to that, your church leaders would want you to know they would also like for you to give of your tithe. I'm mentioning those because there are excellent opportunities for all of us to show how much we love God. But more than that, they actually offer us an opportunity to show our dependence on God because we can do nothing without him. And so because of him, we return a tithe. We also give of our talent. We also give of our time. And we also watch out for our temple as well. So those are the things that we wanted to share with you as we collect the morning's tithes and offering. Now, given the fact that we're collecting tithes and offering, it would be important to note, and they've already put it at the bottom of the screen, that there are some ways in which you can do that through eccsda.org. And when you get onto that site, you can actually hit the button that says give. That's the way in which you could give your tithe. You could also mail it to the address at the bottom of the screen. So you'll see that also. So those are some ways in which you can give your tithe. Again, today, I'm employing of us to not only give our tithe, but to find ways to give of our time, our talents, and our temple. So often, again, we spend time talking about the tithes, but there's so many other ways in which we can give. And today, it is a privilege to be able to ask you to give of an offering that's not just financial. Thank you so much for this opportunity and this privilege to return back to God not only his tithes and offerings, but also other things which in the, illustrate how much we depend and how much we trust in him. And in our song of meditation this morning is, Lord, I love you more than anything, more than anything. I worship you. I just want to tell you, Lord, that I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more, more than anything. Sister Tracy's going to lead us into worship this morning. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Mm -hmm. I love you, Jesus. 
Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. I lived. I lived. I lived. I lived my hands in total adoration on. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. unto you. You reign, you reign on the, the throne. throne. <laughs> For you are God and God because alone. Of you. Because of you my cloudy days are gone. I, sing to you. I can sing to you this song. I just, I just want to say that I Love you more than anything. I love you. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap you in my arms. You are my shelter from the storm. From the storm. When all my friends were gone. When they're gone. You were right you there. Right there all alone. All alone. Like, like this, this before. I just want to say. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love. Oh, I, I love you, Jesus. You, Jesus. I worship. I worship just want to tell Just want to tell That I love you, yeah Lord, I love you More than anything I love you so, I love you so, I love you so I love you, Jesus I love you so I worship and adore you Ah! 
And I want you, Jesus. Woo. I want you, Jesus. So never want you in my life. I want I you. want you, Jesus. Yeah. But I want you. I love you, and Jesus. And I need you. And I love you. I love you, and Jesus. And I love you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love you, Jesus. I'm not ashamed to tell the world. I love you, Jesus. I'm not ashamed to let the world. I love you, Jesus, more than, than anything. Yes, I love you more than anything. Oh, praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. I love you more than anything. We thank God for the, the opportunity to be six feet above ground and the opportunity to be in this his house of prayer once again. It looks like we're beginning to see some light at the end of the tunnel with this pandemic. And we hope uh, somewhere midsummer we can, can get all uh, come back to church in person Amen. and continue to thank God for what he's brought us through. It's been a little over a year and um, we haven't missed a beat, so to speak which is a strong indication that, that God is with us. Amen. I'd like to turn your attention this morning to the, the, um, the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 17, and I just have one, one text this morning, and that one text um, will have a lot to say. Psalm 17 and verse 3. Psalm 17 and verse 3. Thus says the, the word of God. Thou has proved my heart. Thou has visited me in the night. I'll say that again. Thou has visited me in the night. Thou has visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. I have entitled this morning's message, The Night Doctor. Father God, we thank you for your mighty, mighty presence. 
we thank you for your ministry throughout the night. For if you had not been there, the devil would have wiped all of us out. We're grateful for your unfailing love through Christ Jesus our Lord. And in his name we do pray. The night doctor. Few of us, very few of us carefully guard the way we go to sleep at night. We stay up all hours of the night watching CNN, MSNBC, or Fox News filling our minds with all kinds of depressing thoughts and images. And if we're not staying up watching depressing news or movies on television, we do other things and we go to bed at night anxious and stressed about what tomorrow holds. Thus, we go to sleep at night with unresolved issues in our hearts and our relationships. Because we fail to carefully guard the avenues of our minds at night, those thoughts extend themselves into the inner sanctum of our mind, the subconscious. These depressing thoughts and images simmer there, simmer within our minds as we sleep. They leave the door open Follow the, metaphor, follow the metaphor, they leave the door open for evil spirits to come in, mess with our minds and subconscious, and work havoc on our spirituality and growth in Christ. Thus, the title of our sermon the night doctor. While the devil and demons are trying to get into our minds and our psyche because we have not been careful to guard the avenues of our minds and we have left the door open to, to them, God in his infinite wisdom and unfailing love for you and for me, if we let him, he shuts the door on the devil and his demons and he ministers to us throughout the night. He brings healing to the pain and the suffering we have received at the hands of the devil and his demons throughout the day. And as our text reminds us, he says, it is God that visits us in the night. And if nobody has our back, I come to share with you this morning, God has our back. While we are sleeping, the Spirit of God that resides in us never sleeps nor slumbers because the devil never sleeps nor slumbers. And it is the Spirit of God that is within us 
that stays up all night guarding the avenues of our door, which we should have done ourselves. And as I've shared with you on a number of occasions, the Spirit of God is not in the church. It's not in this room. Rather, the Spirit of God is in each and every one of us. We are the room that the Spirit resides in. You remember the story of Joseph when Pharaoh had his dream at night, watching too much of that bad stuff, fell asleep, was troubled by what he dreamt, and so they sent for the man of God, Joseph, who successfully interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And do you remember, if you follow the story, that after Joseph had interpreted the dream, Pharaoh was so elated, so joyful and feeling good about what Joseph had done. Do you remember what Pharaoh said to his courtiers about Joseph? Just in case you forgot, in Genesis chapter 41 and verse 8, it tells us, Pharaoh said to his courtiers, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God resides in? The Spirit was in Joseph, not in the temple, not in the room. The Spirit was in Joseph. When the Spirit of God fell on Pentecost, it did not fall on Jerusalem, nor did it stay in the room very long. Let me read something to you for a moment. Acts, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, about that experience. Verse 1 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat on each and every one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When the Spirit fell, it came like a mighty rushing wind, filled the house. And it didn't just sit on the pew or on the chair. Rather, the Spirit fell on the disciples. And every last one of them were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak in other tongues, not just their natural tongue, in other tongues as the spirit that resided within them gave them utterance. The harm the devil does to us throughout the day can and will leave a lasting impact on our lives if it were not for God who ministers to us throughout the night. The Holy Spirit seeks to bring healing through the night. 
what we go through today, what the devil does through us throughout the day, God comes in at night and brings healing. When Job, stay with me now, I'm just going to teach a little bit and then I'll preach. When Job was questioning God, and if I were in Job's shoes, I'm sure I would have been doing, saying the same thing. Because throughout the day, the devil had wiped out all of his children, wiped out their homes, their animals, wiped out everything that was dear to him. Even his wife said to him, why don't you just curse God and die? So Job uh, had every right in my mind to question God because what had befallen him, and if you follow the story closely, you remember his friend Elihu in Job chapter 33 verses 12 to 17 challenges Job about his relationship with God. Let me read that and then we will preach a little while. Verse 33 and 12 says, Behold, this is Elihu speaking to Job because Job is questioning God because God have allowed the devil to whip up on him and beat him up on him throughout the day. Elihu says to Job, Behold, in this thou art not just, I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yea, man perceives it not. The night when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumbering upon the bed, then God opens the ears of men and sealed their instructions that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride for man. The point that must not be missed is that at night, God gives counsel in the hidden recesses of our conscience, even when we are not aware of it. Our thoughts, our desires, our dreams are filled with God's purposes. Perhaps, perhaps, and this is my preaching imagination, perhaps this is why at creation God counts the days from sundown to sundown. Think about it for a moment. The victories of the night come before the victories of the day. God ministers to us in the night so we can be spiritually fortified and strengthened to do battle with the devil for the day. God ministers to us in the night. This is the pattern this is the way God works with us to keep us healed and strong after a hard-fought battle with the devil throughout the day. Yet, there's no need to fear the night. Some people fear the night because, you know, all those things we've learned early or been told, you know, the boogeyman at night and, uh, and some of those things we carry on up into our adulthood and 
and we're scared to go to bed at night. <laughs> There's no need to fear the night because David says in Psalms 91, five, he reminds us, we are not to be afraid for the terror by night because God has a ministry that takes place at night. In Psalm chapter 30, verse 5, he reminds us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Joy comes in the morning because God has a ministry at night. In Romans chapter 13, verse 12, Paul says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, meaning all of the things that the devil has did to us throughout the day and we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Paul says, let us shed those things because the works of darkness are cast off because the Spirit of God is doing its work throughout the night. Notice the flow of the text. It's our anchor text found in Mark chapter 1 and uh, verse 32 through 39. Mark chapter 1 verse 32 and I'll read to, through verses 39. And at evening or at, or at eve, eve, even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered at the door, and he healed many that were sick of divers diseases, and he cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek thee. And Jesus said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. Therefore came I. Notice how Jesus prepares himself to deal with the devil at night and in the day. Our passage says, at evening, at sunset, that's the night, they brought unto him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered at his door and he cured many who were sick of various diseases and he cast out many demons and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him there are a number of things taking place at night just like it is in our city and in our world there are a whole lot of evil things taking place at night. But allow me to focus on two points, Dave, and then I'm ready to jump on the train. Allow me to focus on two main points. The first of which is ministry that Jesus does first is taking place at night. At evening, at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and diseased, and then all the works that I've just read. At ministry first takes place at night. God is doing ministry at night. He's dealing with the devil and demons at night. He's at war with Satan on behalf of his people and us. He is healing those who have been worked over by Satan 
throughout the day. He's treating those who are sick. He's casting out the bad demons. And while he's casting out the bad demons, he's telling the weak demons, you just shut your mouth or you'll be cast out too. God is doing ministry at night. Secondly, at the back end of night, the text says, Jesus rising up a great while before day, he goes out and departs into a solitary place, and there he prays. Notice, he's not doing ministry at night at this point. He is the one being ministered to. He goes out unto a solitary place, kneels down, gets down and looks up to heaven, calls out to his father, and he and his father commune one with another, and his father is now ministering to him who had been ministering all night on behalf of the people. I think I'm ready, Dave. He prepares himself for the next day. He prepares himself to deal with the devil and his demons by allowing the Father to minister to him in the night. <laughs> notice, notice the flow of the passage. It's loaded with the vicissitudes of life. And he healed many that were sick of divers diseases. He cast out many devils and he suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he goes out and departs into a solitary place, and there he prays. The path is loaded. He's casting out demons. He's healing people. He has their back. Yet, we find at night, in the midst of all of the hustle and bustle, the ups and the downs he's just gone through, we find these quiet words. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he goes out and departs into a solitary place. And there he's ministered to at night by his father. In the center of breathless activities, healing, casting out de demons, there is a sigh of release, a coming apart into the stillness of the night where he connects with his father and he allows his father to minister to him so he can have strength to do the work the Father sent him to do. He gets a visit at night that he might be strengthened to do battle with the devil in the day. At sundown, the beginning of the night, he is surrounded by people vying for his attention good and bad people. He's doing serious ministry. Yet at sundown, the end of the night, rising up a great while before day, we find him in a moment of stillness, withdrawal, contemplation. He allows the Father to minister to him. You see, you cannot do serious ministry 
throughout the day unless you allow God to visit you at night. Therefore, we must be careful how we go to sleep at night. We must close the door to the devil and keep it open all night for Jesus to minister to us, to bring healing to what we've gone through through the day. You see, the night cometh when no man can work but God. And so God has chosen the night to bring healing to our minds and our subconscious because what we have gone through through the day. So you must learn to get in the habit of guarding what comes into your mind before you go to sleep at night. Because if you leave the door open to the devil, he'll come in to your subconscious and he will have his way with your mind. And if you don't have that connection with God, which says, Lord, you are Lord of my life, and even when I don't know how to do right, do right for me, then God can step in and close the door on the devil and bring healing to your mind and your subconscious while you sleep at night. You see, our fellowship with God must be in the forefront of our minds as we dove off to sleep. When we, when we kneel down or when we lay down to sleep, to pray, our prayers must be more powerful and profound than now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Our prayers must, must take on a personal attachment to God's hand. Our prayers must take on the Spirit of God. Even if, even if we know we hadn't gotten it all right. Even when we know that we're struggling to maintain that relationship with God and the devil has had his way with us. When we finally make it to the night and we lay our heads down on the pillow at night, we have to ask the Lord, Father, I'm making this personal. Give me your spirit. Clean the garbage out of my mind. Strip me of the negative stuff I have taken into my mind via television, Facebook, YouTube, and other online platforms which are nothing more than leaves promising fruit that will never come to fruition. We pray at night for deep cleansing of our thoughts, our dreams, our vision, our desires, our wounds, our attitudes, and the battle we will soon face in the day. His nightly ministry affects how we wake up and it enhances our ability to carry out a sense of his presence throughout the day. If we are going to be successful in this life, we must learn that we cannot give what we have not received at night. And we cannot fight unless we have been equipped by God 
at night. Our text says, Thou has visited me in the night. What we receive during the night, we are now able to give throughout the day. We can fight the devil because God has equipped us. And the equipping comes as God ministers to us throughout the night. Many of us have bad dreams and all kinds of stuff going on in our mind. We wonder, what, what, is it, what is this all about? Well, when we expose ourselves to things outside of the purview of God, sometimes God will allow those things to simmer in our minds so that we can come to an understanding that if we want true healing, not only to our bodies, but to our mind and soul. We have to allow him to minister to us throughout the night. In other words, we have to give God the last word and not CNN and MSNBC and, and Fox and, and all the other things we give or watch before we lay our head down on our pillow. No, we have to give him our thoughts. First and foremost, as we lay our head down to go to sleep at night. So finally, my brothers and my sisters, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, think on these things at night. And God will minister to you at night. And when you wake up the next day, you will have what you need to deal with the devil throughout the day because you have received what you need through the night. God is, as David said, God ministers to us throughout the night. I'm so glad that we have a savior whose unfailing love understands us, understands our frame, understands our weaknesses, understands our shortcomings, understands what we need when we need it most. But what I love most about him is that his love is always there for you and for me, no matter what. So all he asks is that we work with him. We work with him, that we close as best we can and know how the avenues of our minds to the devil and we open it up to his spirit to minister to us, bring healing to us throughout the night that we might have a successful day, a day that will take us on into eternity and we find our place with our Father who longs to be with us, trying to create that desire in us that we might want to be within him. Father, we thank you for what you do for us Amen. that we cannot do for ourselves. We thank you for your ministry Amen. to us throughout the night. Thanks for joining our worship celebration today. We hope you've been encouraged and inspired by the spoken word with Pastor Eugene Lewis. If you would like to speak to the pastor or request special prayer, please call 206-322-0717. Tune in again next week at 11 o'clock a.m. right here at the Emerald City Community Seventh-day Adventist Church on Facebook. Remember, God loves you. And today, don't forget to tell someone that you love them too. 
See you again next time on Facebook Live at Emerald City Seventh-day Adventist Church.